Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you some points to think over if you are trying to decide between Saxon Math um, Algebra 1 half, so I have that here with me, Saxon Algebra 1 half, or Saxon Math 8 7. So if you followed my channel for any amount of time, or if you just take a quick look around, you notice that I am living in a camper and in a camper you have limited space. So being that I do not have a kiddo currently in Saxon Math 8-7, I don't have that in my possession. It is in storage right now. So what I have instead, um, you can one, either watch the video of where I walked you through a lesson with my son last year, going through Saxon Math 8-7, and it'll kind of give you a glimpse. But in its place right now, I do have a kiddo in Saxon Math 6-5. And the thing about Saxon Math with 6-5, 7-6, or 8-7, they all follow this standard um, same sequence and like they look almost identical. I mean, obviously the lessons are different and age appropriate, but all the lessons follow the same um, kind of routine every day. This changed and that's kind of what I'm going to be going over with you and kind of sharing with you now that we're kind of like close to a third of the way through this textbook. I just wanted to kind of give you my thoughts. So if you're looking at it and trying to figure out, okay, should I do Saxon Math H7 or Algebra 1 half? What should I do? Because if you look on the website, it's kind of confusing. I think I've read that this was what was in place in the beginning and they've since redone some of their material and that was what um what came out of that was saxon math 87 and so they kind of like are in my in my point of view and um from my experience and seeing what my son has done they're kind of on equal playing fields and I think I've seen that, that people say, you really don't need to do both. And I'll answer why we're doing both here in just a moment. Um, if you're wondering that, like, okay, if they are doing the same thing, why are you, why are you redoing it? Good question. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over that. So it might make it a little easier for you. Um, so one, why did, why are we doing it? So Again, if you've been on this channel and you followed me for any amount of time, you know that um, I got super confused by, I don't know how, I just did not do enough research on my end. I take full responsibility for it, but I skipped an entire year of math with my oldest and it was actually this one. So they overlap. So this is kind of like you could do it in sixth grade or fifth grade kind of thing, um, six, five. So they have a math five, four, six, five, seven, six, eight, seven. And I thought it was just a five, four, seven, six. So when my son finished five, four, I jumped right into seven, six. And honestly, I remember thinking, this is really advanced. I don't think he should be doing this. And at that point, that was what led me into my research and thinking, oh, want to know why it's so advanced? It's because it is. And we skipped an entire year. At that point, we were like a third of the way through the curriculum and he was doing so-so with it. He wasn't really struggling any more than he had in previous years. And so when I talked with my husband, I was like, should we, should we stop him and go back and redo it? And it was kind of like, if he is getting it and he doesn't seem to be having any problems, we're just going to trudge through. And he ended up doing just fine with it, having even skipped an entire um, book of math. So, um, didn't do that with my second, my second, we bought this one. It's the first time that any of my kids have used this particular grade level. So it, um, that that's explaining why. So my son, my oldest is in sixth grade. And if I weren't, if I hadn't have done algebra one half, we would have been jumping into algebra and he's in sixth grade. And I kind of thought, you know what? he's in sixth grade. If I continue at this pace, at this sequence, he's going to be done with like all of his math, like at least by his sophomore year in high school. And I just thought, you know, there's no point. We're not in a rush there. I'm not, I'm not racing anyone to prove anything about how well or not well my kids do in math. It's just, it's just for them. And I thought there's no harm and just seeing this one have and doing this one, maybe solidifying some of the facts that we've done in the past. And I kind of was just using it like if we got into it and I was like, it's either 
it is like I wasn't entirely sure maybe it was gonna be a little bit more advanced and that would be a good stretch for him or if it was so boring and mundane that it wasn't challenging him at all then I would just stop and we would find something different and new and maybe go on or find an entirely different curriculum that wasn't Saxon in the first place. So that was kind of our thought process. Let's not like push him crazy. He's just in sixth grade. There's no rush. Let's just kind of enjoy it. So what are my thoughts about this? My son likes it and I'll explain why. Well, I'll say one. There are a couple of things of why I think this is... He has not learned anything new. Everything that he has done in this has been review for him. So if you're kind of wondering, okay, are, is one more difficult? Do I need to do both? From my experience so far, they're following the same scope and sequence. Maybe not the same lessons per, you know, like this lesson covers the area of a triangle and this one covers the area of triangle. Maybe not in that respect. But as far as where it's going, it's, it's not doing anything new. So far, everything that he has done, again, we're only a third of the way through. It's all been things that he has done or has been um, that he, he knew about. So it wasn't really super difficult. He also likes about this one. Now, I will say it is a toss up because I kind of like if I had to choose and I were as a parent, I would choose going with the 8-7 because of the reasons why he would choose this one. So what are some differences? This one does not have the mental math exercises at the beginning of every lesson. And so when you are looking at a lesson, so let's just jump in here at one. So here at this lesson, it just hops right into the lesson and you can see that it is super short and um, so here, this is lesson 40 is talking about reciprocals, the multiplication rule and the division rule. And, um, well, of course I chose one that actually had a few more examples in it. So these are both examples of the rules and some more here. And then it does have a few like lesson practice. It's not labeled that it's just labeled practice in this book, but then you get right into the problem set that is similar as the previous books in that there it's a combination of all previous lessons that you've learned. So it's a, a little bit of everything under each problem. It does tell you what lesson it was covered in, but it doesn't have the mental math. So let me jump in here again. This is six, five, but all the eight, seven was set up the exact same way. And that at the beginning of every lesson, this box was called like mental math exercises. And so it was just teaching you some skills of how to do some mental math in your head. It would give you some like shortcuts of how to figure out problems like step by steps. And we always did those um, kind of as a warm up before we started our lesson. It kind of went over some past things that you've learned and it just kind of built on as you went throughout the year. Gabriel enjoys that we do not have that anymore, right? He doesn't want to be challenged. He doesn't want to have to do anything extra. He's a typical boy. Um, I don't like that though, because he's losing that little just mental exercises that we were doing. Now, the other reason that he does not, uh, or that he likes this one is that this one does not come with any math fact worksheets. So um, this is what it comes with. When you buy the packet, there were four things in it and it has your textbook actually it's significantly smaller than eight, seven, eight, seven was bigger. It comes with, um, the answer keys here that has the, uh, answers to, um, all of the problems and all the tests. Um, this is the test key. Sorry. That was, is the test key. And then it has just a little booklet of all of the tests. And so I don't rip these out. Honestly, the one good thing about this is that I will have when I, if and when I do this again with another child, I will actually have to buy nothing. None of this is usable. So I will be able to reuse every single one of these things. We have a, a notebook that he does all of his work in and I keep that. But when, if and when my next child goes through this, we will just need a notebook because he's not physically using any one of these things. So, okay, that is a pro. But like I said, there are no math fact worksheets. So with Saxon 8-7 and all the other Sax, uh, 
uh, 54657687. They all come with math, math fact worksheets. So here's an example. There's some division, they have multiplication, they'll have um, addition and subtraction, um, but these are more of the ones. So he is excited that he does not have these every day. Um, you know, it's usually like 64 or night, like it ranges anywhere from like 25 to 100 problems depending on the day and what you're covering. So he doesn't have to do those anymore and he's super excited. However, if you have multiple kids and you have kids who are doing this, I didn't let him off the hook. So I'll show you what I did. He's now my grader for my six, five kiddo. So my second son is in math six, five. And so since Gabriel is no longer doing math back worksheets, he now has to grade Isaiah's. So he grades them. He does silly things for his brother and gives him weird names. Um, but that was a way that I found to kind of keep his mind in, um, math fact, you know, keep his mind doing the math facts. So, um, but what I prefer him to like kind of do a few, he still has a few that maybe he, he don't come as quickly. He can get them all, but maybe still don't come as quickly. And I wouldn't mind him having some of those worksheets to do. So that's a con in my book. If I were choosing between the two, I would definitely want to stick with math eight, seven, rather than going with this one, um, because of the math facts and the mental math that we do at the beginning. So another thing that I want to point out that I found, and I am trying to think, like, I haven't, like, exhausted every single book. I've been kind of lazy, and I probably should look into it a little bit more and determine if I'm missing something. But one of the things that I want to point out, and if anyone has done this before and knows what I'm missing, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know. But okay, so I told you just a second ago that they do have, oh, I skipped it. Okay, here, at the this is the lesson here, lesson 46, the order of operations with fractions. Um, lesson is super short, right? Here's the lesson. So the one I just showed you a second ago is not typical. It's usually not a couple of pages long. So this is literally all the lesson is. That is um, significantly shorter than anything that I would have seen in the 8-7. So I feel like the lessons are a little bit more condensed, a little bit, um, I felt like they explained things a lot better in 8-7 than in this book. I felt like it was just a very abbreviated in here. And being that this is our second year kind of doing this material, it's not that big of a deal because he has seen it before. And I felt like it just explained it a little bit better in 8-7 than what's in here. So that's something to know if you're coming in this with, with zero, um, without having seen it before. So um, again, for this lesson, that's, that's the only explanation that they have. But then what I wanted to point out was this practice. So I have normally in the 8-7, all of your uh, lesson practice was just included in the answer key. It is not included in the answer key. So I've been having to go back and um, in the beginning, I couldn't find it at all. And I was just doing all of the math problems so that I can make sure that he got the new concept. And so I had to do the problems myself. Super frustrating, I know, right? I don't wanna have to do like two or three problems. First word problems right here. But one thing I did notice is that in the back of the book, this is like a typical like textbook that you would maybe find in a public school or something like that, where it has the answers to like odd problems in the back. I don't think my son has caught on. I don't think he even realizes um, that it's back here, but I don't accept um, just plain answers. I expect work to be shown, so it wouldn't work for him anyway, but he has no idea. He's super, um, uh, you know innocent, we'll say. Um, but it has, I finally realized that it has the lesson practice answers, but only the odd ones. So if you'll look, they label them by A, B, and C. So it has like the answers to A and C. And so I still have been going back and having to do the even problems in the lesson practice. Again, I mean, it's, it's some extra time and I have to sit down and figure, okay, what was his lesson about? Do, you know, and I have to do the problem and make sure that I come to the same answer as he does. So that has been a minor frustration with that. Again, if you know that it those answers are hidden somewhere in here, please let me know. I would love to know um, so that I can stop having to do those extra problems. But I just wanted to let you know of that little fact 
if that is a deterrent for you, maybe math is just not your jam and you don't want to have to, you know, do any problems to verify. Now, the other thing that I wanted to point out that I will say is a pro in this curriculum, and maybe it's not so much that it's this one, this book, perhaps this um, book in particular, but more so in the fact that this is rev a review year. All right. So I said that in the beginning that I am treating this more as a year of review and solidifying the facts that we have done before we step into and getting into algebra. So with that, when we started out, I was still doing the lesson similar as to the video where I kind of, I showed you that do a lesson with me of eight, seven. I was reading him the lesson. We were doing the lesson practice together. And then I would kind of set him on his own to do the mixed practice. Since then, and trying to, you know, Gabriel got tired of waiting for me to finish with all of his brothers and sisters or sister. And so, um, he has taken it upon himself to read his lesson on his own and then do the lesson practice and the mixed practice all on his own. So that is a huge blessing to me because I am not involved in his math at all, other than the fact that I am grading it and then we discuss anything that he has gotten wrong and we go over those problems. So if he got anything wrong, or, um, or if he just had a question in general, there have been a couple of times where he didn't understand something. He needed me to clarify. Once I clarified it, it made perfect sense. But by and large, he is doing his math on his own. And, and that's the goal, at least in our family, is to make self-sustaining kids who know how to teach themselves. I don't want them to ever have to rely on me as they get older. I mean, obviously, I'm not doing this with my younger kids. But as they get older, I want them to know how to find resources, be able to read those resources and teach themselves anything. That's the ultimate goal in, in our homeschool is that I want them to be able to learn anything that they want to learn and they don't have to necessarily rely on me to do it. Now, it may involve getting help every once in a while, which is totally fine. We all need help at some point, but it's it's just getting them in that um, mindset that I can, I can learn anything and if I study hard enough and if I find the right resources or the right people to help me along the way, then I can do that. And so that has been a goal of mine all along and it's like one of those points where you're like you see the light coming down from heaven and it's like the angels are going ah because it is so exciting to see Gabriel reaching that point at which he is kind of taking ownership of his school and um I'm really only a coach and like a cheerleader for him and so when he needs help I help but when I when he needs help I guide but he is doing it on his own and that is super exciting. So um, let that just be of an encouragement to you guys. Not that I have arrived. There are so many things that we still struggle with, but this is our eighth year in homeschool. And so after eight years, if you're on the very beginning and you're wondering at what point am I going to be able to walk away for a few minutes and they're going to still be able to do their work without me like looking over their shoulder, it comes guys. It really, really does come. And it is an amazing moment, an amazing feeling to know that you don't have to be there to watch every little letter that they write and every problem they do and read every single thing for them. So that is super exciting. All right, guys, so that's just my very basic synopsis of like algebra one half, uh, Saxon math eight, seven, kind of where I stand between. Um, just as a recap, if I had to choose, I would still choose Saxon math eight, seven. I liked all the encompassing things, all the extra added things that they had, the time test, the mix, uh, the mental math, the problem, the answers to the problems of the mixed practice and the um, lesson practice that was missing in this one. Um, so overall I would choose Saxon, um, eight, math eight, seven, but, um, this, if you are looking for just a review year, this is turning out to be a good, like solidifier as far as making sure that all the concepts that we learned last year are, you know, not in one ear and out the other. So that's just kind of my review. If you guys have any questions as always, I'm happy to answer them. And until next time guys, have a blessed day.